And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Zoe Aurelian Peak. We're going to be playing some Targon. We haven't played Targon in a while. And basically what I what I wanted to do and what the goal of this deck is, is to go really, really big. Yesterday, I was kind of bummed out. Uh, didn't have the best day playing. We played against Aphelios all the time. What was our last 15 games? We played against 11 Aphelios decks. And it was, uh, we were playing some, some kind of underpowered decks also, so I was just getting buried by Aphelios game after game, and it was a bummer. What's up, Maximus? Thanks, for the, thanks so much for that resub, I appreciate that. Um, oh, and we had QQ with the resub also, about 10 minutes ago, that I think I kind of missed. Sorry about that, QQ. Alright, so two subs on the day. Okay, uh, back to our deck. So basically what I wanted to do was I wanted to play a deck that went much bigger than the Aphelios Twisted Fate deck because they just get so much value, get so many cards. I wanted to go really big. And so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to play three Targon Speak and we're playing Zoe and Aurelian Soul with Feel the Rush and the Skies Descend. That's right, three Skies Descend because even though they can, they can get their value, they go wide. I just want to blow up their board and do it again and do it again and then just put 10 tens into play and kill all their stuff and put 10 tens into play and kill their stuff, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. So I just wanted to go really big. Um, so that's that's what we're doing. That's what we're playing. Um, some some Nexus healing also, since we're going to be slow, we're going to have Star Shaping, the Fangs, Solari Sunforger, um, and then Kindly Tavern Keepers in here also. Um, just getting Celestials is going to be important because we may actually be able to hard cast this guy's Ascend sometimes. You know, we do have a, a couple of dragons with Aurelian Soul and Eclipse Dragon. And then we have, um, as far as Celestials, also the Fangs, Solari Priestess, and then Spacey Sketcher and Zoe. So we have a few ways to get some Celestials in play also, and obviously Aurelian Soul. And so maybe we'll cast Skies Ascend sometime, but for the most part, we're going to be trying to just land at Targon's Peak. You know, like they they kind of take a turn off for their four mana landmark and the Veil Temple, and then we'll take a turn off for our five mana landmark, Targon's Peak. Um, so, you know, like, they're not, like, the fastest deck, so we should be able to uh, take a turn off to be able to play this. And then, boom, go big. All right, so that's that's the plan. We'll see how it works. Should be fun. Either way, probably not going to be playing too many close games, right? We're either going to be uh, doing just majestic things and winning by, uh, you know, by a mile and just destroying our opponent, or they're going to kill us really quickly while our hand just has a bunch of cards that cost 12 mana and it's like turn four and i'm like what am, what am i doing <laughs> so one of those two things are probably going to happen and we're playing against burn so it's probably going to be the second one of us getting destroyed let's see so century into tavern keeper pretty good turn four i go divergent yeah so this just looks pretty good there we go okay well we just drew Drew the Targon's Peak, so I feel pretty silly for keeping this Diversion Paths. Cool. Spacey Sketcher can just discard Diversion Paths. Yeah, we're looking, we're looking not bad. They got a slow hand. Ah, uh, I really wanted Moon Silver, right? Like Moon Silver here would make something cost one less. And so we can make Targon's Peak cost four mana, so we can play the Peak this next turn. That's what I really want. What I really, really want. So the Messenger is something we could... So we can either just play a 2-2 out here to block, or we could get a Crescent Strike that can, like, stun and, and make an, one attack step more difficult for them. And that's probably going to save us more life over playing a 2-2. I'm sorry, Cosmo. Wow, they just pass? Their hand must be a lot of champions. Or, like, a lot of Jinx. A lot of... House spot there. Spot should just get rid of this tavern. Maybe I should just play this tavern keeper. No, I don't heal my Nexus for at all, but Welcome to the 
I just think Crescent Strike is just going to be much better to save. Cool. Well, I guess not that cool. No, because we're going to... Yeah, we'll probably Skies Descend. Okay, so if I Crescent Strike now... Yeah, we'll go in Crescent Strike now. We'll maybe be able to Skies Descend before they attack the next time. Um, but they should have, like, the, the four mana Overwhelm unit, which is why... Which is, like, the, the reason why I wanted to wait on the Crescent Strike. But... Ooh, good. I say they do have that. Come on, target. I really hope I hit their spinning axe. <clears throat> right? That that'd be best case scenario, hit the spinning axe. Yuck. Time for the money makers. I guess we're really doing this. I've got meat bigger than you. Look out for reasons. I don't know if they'll have overwhelm, but so that's twelve damage. Yuck. All right, 15 damage. Of course, playing this Lari Priestess first for the Daybreak. I guess that's not in a course. I could play this Targon's Peak, actually. Actually, it's probably better to play Targon's Peak. Alright, so we'll get rid of those. I was really hoping that they would play another thing. Alright, come on, hit Feel the Rush. Yeah. Yeah, buddy, let's go. Let's hopefully not die. Now Moon Silver. That's their last card there. Why not? Oh, right. You can't block the other 10 times. So we're looking pretty good. We're still at 5. And I just want to get this card out of my hand. I, I don't want my Targon's Peak to hit it. Man, our deck is sweet. <laughs> Equinox. <laughs> that's alright. Early and so you made like the weakest Celestial Garb, but that's all good. I think we'll be fine. Okay, that's actually really bad for me. Because that, that can draw them multiple burn spells that can kill me. That's really bad. So let's start with you. Let's take you. I mean, the life it doesn't really matter that much, because by the time... Uh, I need a... 
elusive blocker. I got two elusive blockers now, and they have one elusive attacker. By the time this lifesteal would happen, if they could kill me, they'd be able to kill me anyway, so... Alright, well... Let's see if we got him. Alright, we got him. There we go. Zoe Aurelian Peak. We just had we had the perfect uh, Targon's peak a couple of turns in a row, you know, hitting the the you know the skies descend and then the field of rush. Let's get rid of these two and look for Targon's peak or more Zoe's. I'm not sure what kind of champion split they're gonna have between Zoe, Aphelios, Fiora. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what they're going to have going on. Um, I, I am a little worried about Fiora. Can see the border from here. Because my things died of Fiora. Hopefully, no Fiora. Alright, so that means Aphelios. So they can hush and block my Zoe. All right, I would have definitely snapped off a block with the Averrosen Sentry. So I, I may not actually attack with the Zoe because of hush, you know. So we'll we'll see what they want to do. See if they tap under hush or not. And also just I forgot kind of forgot about this card. So it costs five mana. I did kind of forget about this card. Lots of Zoe's. Do, do, do. Please don't ever play Fiora. I'm kind of feeling like going the Sleepy Trouble Bubble, like, I guess. You know, like, I don't I don't know if we're in, like, the best Targon's Peak situation. Hmm. So yeah, they're so they're just gonna be no. This it doesn't make sense to sleepy trouble bubble. They're gonna just be protecting their Aphelios too much. So we're at, currently at three. I'm playing the peak. I'm gonna play sleepy trouble bubble and that stuff on on my turn. So worst case scenario, they they protect their Aphelios, but I still get to attack in. Let's done it. Boo. So they've made four moon weapons with one Aphelios by turn five. That's kind of the problem of how easy it is to make moon weapons and make multiple moon weapons in a in a single t in a single turn.
I don't I don't know if I'll ever be able to kill this Phileos besides uh, hoping Skies Ascend kills it, but they are going to be a Bastion deck. Pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, not bad at all. They did stun and then kill the same thing. Ugh, Count Fiora. What's what's the other thing that I'm getting rid of? I think it is it just the is it the Veil Temple or is it the Fiora? I don't it's not the dragon. It's either the Veil Temple or the, the Fiora. I think it's the Fiora, because with the Targon's Peak, we're going to both have, like, they're going to have extra mana anyway. Awesome. Not awesome. Maybe that means they don't have Bastion, though, if we do get the Skies Descend. We have a 50-50 shot of hitting something really good. And they're not they're not even close to done playing things, I don't think. No, not even close. All right, so I'm at five. Come on, peek. Oh, we hit this thing. Spacey Sketcher. So this costs five, six. Man, and everything's just stunned forever. <laughs> On our next turn, we're going to, we're you know, like we're emptying the hand, right? Like I meant, I'm going to spacey sketcher away the Solari Priestess. I'm going to empty my hands. My hand's just going to be Skies Ascend, Field of Rush, and Aurelian Soul. Um, after this turn, unfortunately, our Targon's Peak wasn't as nice to us this game with giving them the Infinite Mind Splitter. And myself not hitting, you're not hitting my big things. But, but they just had a really solid hand with Aphelios on turn three and good protection for it. They just had a, they had a solid hand. There was that hush that I didn't attack, and I didn't get that hush out of their hand earlier. I guess I'm going Serpent. 9, 10, 11. Because I don't want to I don't grab the Messenger and then put something else in my hand. That then our, you know, like we draw the Targon's Peak, then our Targon's Peak hits the Targon's Peak.
We're still dead here, right? Yeah, like we're still we're, we're still dead. Like no matter what, yeah, like we're still dead, because they just get because they're getting overwhelmed next, and so they just overwhelm the Ophelia. So I do not survive this. Even if even if all four of these cards like. Even if they just discard like all these. Well, they'd have to just play one card to get the Inferno, but yes, yeah, so we're dead here. They could be scared. That was a good spell shield for that Aphelios. No, nope, they are not scared. GG's. I wouldn't mind playing that matchup again, but they they got us that time. All right, another Aphelios deck. So this is again same kind of deck. Looks like people are kind of leaning towards these of like protect the queen kind of decks with Aphelios of just play Aphelios and protect it forever. I mean, I like Solar Priestess. I like Star Shaping. Maybe we only keep one of each, though. Maybe we don't need the second to buy there. Okay, or, or I guess I'll keep two star shapings. Alright, yep. Prediction is uh, is up right now. It's a really good Avarosan Sentry. This is a better Targon's Pecant. Deal, deal 4, deal 1. Deal 4 can kill... Yeah, we'll just take this. Deal 4 could potentially kill an Aphelios. It's not going to be killing... A Tom Kench. Yeah, if yeah, if you have your if your thing is silenced, then you know, if you go sunburst, silence a Tom Kench, and then kill it, then you don't get your detained units back because your the Tom Kench would be silenced. I don't know if that's even worth it over playing just another Solari Priestess. Of course, it's looking like nope was not worth it, but that's all right. We've 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 done a very good job of drawing Targon Speak so far. I've been very happy about that. Like, all these games, all three games so far, we've had Targon Speak. And I'm happy to get a Bastion out of their hand. Bastion is not a card I want to face. Um, Spell Shield does shut off Sunburst. So Sunburst, sun, Sunburst does not work well against Bastion or similar cards. Yeah, we could kill the 3-4, pop the Spell Shield, but I'll wait on that. They could still play a, an Aphelios. I'd much rather try to target the Aphelios. Like that. 3-4 is whatever. And is pop Spell Shield better than just doing one to this thing? Probably. Basically, if, if your removal spell is not killing a champion, you got to be asking yourself, why is my removal spell not killing a champion kind of thing, right? So, like, you need to be patient on your removal spells. Make sure they're killing champions, especially when you have champions like Aphelios. So, obviously, they're going to take Meteor Shower. They, I mean, they could take Avalanche, but you, you got to think that they're going to be taking Meteor Shower. Oh, wow. What about this hand? Are you kidding me? Wiggly Burblefish is not an okay card. 
<laughs> it needs to stop just printing zero mana cards. Ugh. It's just like you, you get the Heimerdinger payoff without having to play Heimerdinger. Okay, so we're probably going to have to star shaping, maybe two star shaping this turn. So we do have the Avalanche. Maybe star shaping Avalanche. Um, I guess I want the Great Beyond. It's like Living Legends. I guess Living Legends costing zero. I can play a whole bunch of stuff, then also refill my mana. Okay, actually, yeah, let's, let's do this. That thing costs zero. That's not bad. Why couldn't they get? Uh, why couldn't they get one of these one cost spells to cost zero? Um, so basically, which one am I playing first? Feel the Rush or Avalanche? I guess Avalanche. I don't want my ten tens to be to have eight health for the Destroyer. It's possible I don't attack with Zoe. I know we make the super cool star chart, but if I make super cool star chart, there's just a possibility, you know, like it just increases my, you know, like I don't want super cool star chart to cost zero mana next turn, right? But then again, it does put them from 20 to 10. So I guess I do it. Oh, they're going to hush. No, I shouldn't have attacked. Hush. Yeah, that was just a bad attack. Uh, that was a bad attack. I shouldn't have attacked. That was a bad attack. Oh, I didn't. I didn't even pay attention to their emote. If they with that, I didn't. I didn't even see that. I didn't see if they emoted or not. I don't know. I just, like, right after I attacked, I looked up and I saw they had three mana and realized what, what was about to happen. And I was like, no, I should not have done that. Yep. Really bad attack. Hate to see it. Considering doing nothing. Let's see. So like these two cards are like one one cost cards. Don't they have like two of my spells still? From the spell thief? I don't think they played my other spell, did they? So shouldn't they have like two wiggly burblefish spells and also two of my spells for the four cards? I think so, which means no protection for Tom Kench. I think that's what they have. Yes, that was one of my spells. Maybe grab another one of those. Well, they wouldn't have the mana. That's not not a one cost card from. That's a that's a great card. That's not a wiggly burble fish card. Oh, did burble fish hit the spell thief? Oh wow! I think I guess. Burblefish hit a Spell Thief. Wow. That's that's the best Burblefish hit like in the game. That's another great Burblefish hit. I am not getting good. Not getting... Good help from my Targon's Peak. Bask in her radiant blessing. Come on in. Oh. 
Maybe I should have just played this Eclipse Dragon on Daybreak, because then I guess... Did I have 11 mana? No, I had 10. Oh, they took... They took my... Feel the Rush with their Spell Thief. Okay. So let's see. So they don't have Overwhelm yet. You got it, you got it. Time for Loki's boy. The constellations bow to me. If they don't kill us this turn, I like our chances quite a bit with this early in soul. You know, like making all those things cost zero. If they don't kill us this turn. There we go. That'll do it. Whew, that was close. Yeah, so zero mana Burblefish hit Spell Thief, which got Feel the Rush, which also caused zero mana. <laughs> and they lost. Ooh, back to burn. This is a tough matchup. Okay. So basically, like, I would keep Skies Ascend with Targon's Peak, as we saw how, like, it really helped us win the first game. But if, if we're going to have Targon's Peak, we need to have, like, we can't just, like, play Targon's Peak and then play a 10 10 and beat this burn deck. Like, a 10 10's not going to get it done. Hmm. I guess I can pass. Let's see what we draw. Fangs. Fangs is pretty good. Hmm. Oh. Oh, sorry. Prediction going. So, yeah, we, we did get rid of a Field of Rush, but we can probably find another Field of Rush. Probably not going to be too difficult. They were hasty on that. They should, like, they should have seen if I would have attacked, because if I would have attacked... Then they would have gotten that free kill. Ooh. I guess Golden Sister. But I do I do need to figure out how to kill Draven. Golden Sister or Fallen Comet? I guess it's Golden Sister, but let's think of these don't really... I mean, so I'll have Skies Descend. That's my, that's my plan. Oh, I'm definitely playing Descend. Yeah, I mean, we're going to Targon Speak, Skies Descend. I mean, that's that's my plan of winning this game. Like, that's how I win. If I if I don't get to Targon Speak, Skies Descend, that means that we probably lose. If I lead with Zoe, they definitely lead with Daring Poro. Maybe they play Jinx. Let me get Zoe in here. You should try blinking sometime. Yuck. Worst card in our deck, Divergent Paths. Okay, so we're going to have a 1 in 5 shot. I want them to be scared. Uh, I maybe should have just played it right there. Maybe they I could see them actually passing here and not attacking. Time for the money makers. 
right I should have played the peak. I could see them passing. How can be so that that was too greedy the second time. Okay. Back heretic. Let's talk about your so they have vision. I'm going to 12, 11. I go to 11. They did. Well, that was the worst case scenario. So that levels up Draven. Now Draven has Overwhelm. Guess I should have blocked Jinx. Game's not over yet. We need it. We have a 20% chance of hitting the Skies Descend. That's what we need. This one right here. Time for the money makers. Twenty percent chance. There we go. Now we gotta hope they did not draw Get Excited. Come on, don't- Oh, they did draw Get Excited? Well, that's game. Come on. And it, exact lethal, too. If I would've just blocked Jinx instead of blocked Draven. I think we win that. If I just blocked Jinx instead of Draven, I think we win that game. Hmm, that's too bad. All right, back to Zoe Aphelios. Problems if they have turn one Zoe. Like, I kind of want to keep both Field of Rush to go along with the Targon's Peak, right? Oh my gosh. Well, I guess we get two early in Souls. But if they just have, like, turn one Zoe and I just don't do anything until turn five, that's, that's a problem. So please don't have turn one Zoe. All right, let's not turn one Zoe. I want them to grab a spell, right? Yeah, I don't want them to grab like a 4-1 that like smashes face real fast. That's alright, well, we got some lifesteal coming up. No Zoe, no Zoe. Sure. Just 8 power on turn 2. Come on, Avalanche. Avalanche. Nope. Sunlight guide you, my brethren. Yeah, basically, if we're winning a late game, right? If we survive, if we survive, we win the late game. It's just they had the most aggressive possible hand, so I don't know if we'll get to a late game. But if we would have, we would have survived it. Or would have won it. So if I play Meteor Shower here, it does open up like an Aphelios. I don't have a better option. But it's I can't really play Targon's Peak this next turn because I'm at five. Because they have they have like this mana and next turn's mana. Yeah, I can't I just can't really play Targon's Peak now, so I have to play the Sunforger. This has to be Daybreak to get the lifesteal. Oh, they missed the Allegiance. So that means they have a Bilgewater card. Bilgewater card's got to be the Challenger, right? I think I just pass. Make them waste their mana in the night. I got two blockers to their three attackers. Because, like, I attack... What, they're going to hush? I guess I just attack. If they want to hush the Zoe, then I then we heal our Nexus for five. And yeah, they they hush that thing. So, you know, we get hush out of their hand, right? Like, we, we kind of had to get hush out of their hand. <clears throat> Alright, now we cast this, try to hit the zero drop. 
Um, was it the zero drop I was thinking, but we'll take that one. Ooh, the fangs. A young once gazed upon these stars. Yeah, I just can't play Targon Speak. I'm too far behind. They should have box to put in hand. I'm guessing that's their Bilgewater card. If that was the stun card, I would have taken the stun card. And I'm just like really awkwardly one mana short from all my cool stuff. Right, like I'm like one mana short from Aurelian Soul, one mana short from Field of Rush. One man short from double Targon's Peak. So I need to keep on playing blockers. So my plan... Is play this with Nightfall. Yes. Good. Hit something else I can play. Good. And now next turn, now I keep... I'm keeping three spell mana for next turn. And so I do have the mana for Field of Rush next turn. So then a nice game to have Skies Descend. We could have cast Skies Descend this turn. But we'll just take a couple of 10-10s instead. Get Skies Descend the hard way. Okay, I guess that's still game over, isn't it? Yep. Well... Because, yeah, challenge, challenge, challenge. No, I guess could be going down to one right now. Yeah, right now I'm going down to one. They don't have another card. Because I can, I can leave the two, two, three. I cannot block the two, two, threes. So a pale cascade would kill me. I love them for the just make that attack. Don't do anything else. Pass priority. Pass, pass, pass. Good. Okay, we're at one. Not dead. Still not dead? Yeah, they're going to burble fish parlay. Come on, star shaping. Star shaping. Tavern Keeper. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, I'm just starting with this Tavern Keeper. I know I'm not playing Skies Descend now, but yeah, I'm not going to die to Burble Fish Parlay. No, sir. Slot. 
Alright, giving that thing overwhelm. That allows it to kill my Eclipse Dragon. But I think that's okay. I think we forced them to do some blocking. You cannot hold us down. This is the wrong path. Do not stray. So their only card they have Dust Petal Dust and they have the one mana card that they made from Burble Fish. Those are the only two things left in their hands. This isn't how you draw it up with the Targon's Peak deck. But it's another way to do it. Oh, I thought that was going to be Parlay. <laughs> I thought that was going to do one damage to me with Parlay. I think we got this. There it is. Three and two. Okay, so I have to say that I was really impressed with our deck here, with this Zo Zoe Aurelian Peak deck. Our deck felt incredibly strong. Um, you know, we had like that, like with our two losses, one of them was the the burn matchup where if they just don't draw, get excited, right? Like if, if like they had their two draws from the Jinx, if, if they just did not draw, get excited. They could be any two other cards. I think that we win that. Well, I guess... I guess if it was, you know, Mystic Shot plus Decimate, that would have killed me also. But not very many people played. I, I, I don't know if they play that many Decimates in that kind of deck. But anyway. Oh, no, that wouldn't have killed me either because I was at exactly seven. So, no, it, it had to have been, yeah, it had to have been just exactly that Get Excited. Because we were because we were at seven and then we were also, uh, we had uh, Life Steal. We had like the 4-3 Life Steal that we are going to be able to play and attack that turn. So, yeah, it had to be exactly Get Excited. So that was one loss. Our other loss was to an Aphelios deck. I think our deck's pretty good against Aphelios. I think we I think we just go much bigger than them, but they had, you know, a great turn three Aphelios hand with a lot of protection and just too many moon weapons. You know, like that kind of stuff. That happens. And then my and also in that loss, my Targon's Peak did not hit my top end, and it also hit their expensive card. It got them an infinite mind splitter, like on turn six. So, you know, like that kind of that kind of game happens. Uh, we're, you're gonna have a lot of variants <laughs> with Targon's Peak, but I think that this I think this deck felt incredibly powerful. I really liked what we had going on. I wouldn't necessarily mind another Sunburst. We never really drew Sunburst, but um, with all these Aphelioses everywhere, and you know, like Aphelios usually has like Pale Cascade and Sun Blessed Vigor and things like that to protect it a little bit. Sun Sunburst seems like a nice card with the Silence, and then and and more people are playing like a. Aphelios with Fiora these days, so more of those kind of decks. Bastion and Spell Shield still do stop Sunburst, but besides that, um, Sunburst can um, be good against everything else, even like barriers and stuff like that. So I wouldn't mind playing another Sunburst. Maybe, um, maybe instead of like the Ice Quake or the Hit That Stairs, I'm not sure if those two are super necessary. Um, but yeah, I liked I liked our list. Um, Sketcher and Sentry were both fine they're they're rough to draw later on and then you know hit on like a targon speak later on but they both are pretty important early game of making sure that you don't die to like a discard burn and um they so they both did their job with that uh let's see i'm not sure if the fangs or the, or the sun forger is better i'm not sure i kind of played two and one if you have a personal preference of like if you really like sun forger or if you really like the fangs Feel free to play three of either one. I liked how the Fangs could get us, you know, like zero mana Celestial card. Like basically another, you know, like with the Fangs, mostly what we want is like the zero mana two one, so we can just get like two bodies to help block, um, and then also be another Celestial card towards Skies Ascend and stuff like that. Um, but uh, what's the point of it? That stairs. It's just it just kind of helps. It, it just it's another card that just kind of helps with with uh, avalanches and ice quakes and things like that. But then also sometimes like those Aphelios decks, there's times where they have like multiple veiled temples, and you honestly just want to destroy all landmarks. <laughs> that that honestly happens sometimes. You just want to obliterate the landmarks because they can have multiple veiled temples that are um, really being annoying. So that's a thing that can happen. But 
Um, you know, it's also an 8-8. Not bad. If it was a dragon, it would be a lot better if it was a dragon. And so then it, if it would count towards Sky's Ascend, that would help life a little bit. But it's not. Uh, that's that's our deck, though. So that's Zoe Aurelian Peak. It felt, it felt uh, really strong. And even though there's going to be some variants, it's definitely a fun one. If you just want to play some really powerful stuff and have fun with that, uh, give this one a try. Give this list a try. Those of you all on YouTube, uh, leave those comments. Let me know what you think of the list. If you do give it a try, I would love to hear your feedback of going through the deck. I would, um, yeah, I would like to hear that. Uh, but that's all I got here for this one. So thank you so much for watching some Zoe Aurelian Peak, and I'll see you for the next video.